What you are about to hear is the historical background to all portraits of Gustav Adolf II of Sweden and all of the folks with whom he was associated either as an ally or adversary. Oh, there was a flood covered the whole earth and the only survivors that were above ground at the beginning of the flood were Noah and his wife, three children and their wives. Now Nimrod, uh, Noah's spawn, he built up uh, some towns in Shinar. It's also been called Sumeria, but we call it Shinar. And some people came from the east. I'm not sure who they were, if they were descendants of Noah, but uh, the leader was Sargon. He became the chief minister or deputy of Nimrod, and he overthrew Nimrod and established a filthy, bloody priesthood of sorcerers and uh, twisted folks. Uh, they started to build a skyscraper, but God wouldn't let them finish it. God scattered these skyscraper building filthy priests and their uh, slave population, and they spread out. The priesthood spread out and established their temples and civilizations in many places. Those are the self-same folks against whom Gustav Adolf was protecting us. He was protecting us against them. I want to read to you now a prophecy from uh, about the year, sometime after the year 305 BC. It's from a prophetess by the name of Goza. One bad time has passed by. But there is still another coming. Eartha has not given it birth. Uralda has not decreed it. It comes from the east, out of the bosom of the priests. It will breed so much mischief that Eartha will not be able to drink the blood of her slain children. It will spread darkness over the minds of men like storm clouds over the sunlight. Everywhere craft and deception shall contend with freedom and justice. I, I'm going to interrupt the prophecy to uh, remind you that uh, you watch a Hollywood movie or I mean a moving picture from the film business and it's all about craft and deception. Scams, uh, they have to resort to craft and deception to get to achieve their plans in these films. And that's an example of this prophecy being fulfilled. I'll repeat it everywhere. Craft and deception shall contend with freedom and justice. Freedom and justice shall be overcome and we with them. Your attention please. I interrupt this prophecy to point out the fact that we're talking about Gustav Adolf and why I'm reading this prophecy to you is because it's about the same folks that Gustav Adolf was protecting us against as he led our armies against them, against their armies. The leadership actually was not with the armies. They were remote in their, um, how you call it, their, their um, safe, safe holds in their strongholds in their safe holds at a far distance away. So we were not fighting the actual perps. We were fighting the armies of the perps. 
And now, let's get back to the prophecy of Goza. But this success will work out its own loss. Our descendants shall teach their people and their slaves the meaning of three words. They are universal law, freedom, and justice. At first they shall shine, then struggle with darkness until every man's head and heart has become bright and clear. Then shall oppression be driven from Irtha like the thunder clouds by the storm wind, and all deceit will cease to have any more power. Goza. Now I want to read to you the historical record telling you how the activities of the priests were transferred to Italy from Troy. Ultimately, the oh, priesthood in Rome was taken over by Simon Magus. Here is from the writings of Beden. And this is about the activities of the priests. In order to make myself well understood, I must let alone for a while my account of the Scotsy people and write something about the Hinde Krekelander, which means the um, people from Italy, the, or it's called the Near Greases, the Near, near Greece. Hinde Krekelander formerly belonged to us only, but from time immemorial, the descendants of Lida and Finda have established themselves there. Of these last, he, these last meaning of the descendants of Finda, there came in the end a whole troop from Troia, which is Troy. Troia is the name of a state that the far Greeklanders had taken and destroyed when the Trojans had nestled themselves among the near Greeklanders, that means in the Italian peninsula, with time and industry they built a strong state with walls and a burg named Rome. And now this that of course refers to the descendants of Aeneas. A burg named Rome, that is spacious. When this was done, the people, by craft and force, made themselves masters of the whole land. All right, that's the end of the quotation, but did you notice the reference to craft? And of course, the Romans are famous for the use of force. The prophecy of Goza referred to craft also, if you remember. Eventually, the priesthood of Rome was taken over by Simon Magus. He found that he had difficulty getting Christians to participate in the economy of his own personal uh, religion that he brought over uh, from his ancestors who came from Babylon. So uh, he cloaked, or he took on uh, a form of Christianity and merged it, uh, put it on as a veneer on top of the religion that he was practicing in private and um, recruited a number of Christians into his economic system where in other words they would pay money into his organization by that method. Uh, ultimately that became the Church of Rome and ultimately the Church of Rome became the ruler of Europe, having control over all the kings of Europe. Any time a uh, king wouldn't do what the Pope said, uh, they would um, find ways of uh, trying to manipulate them through wars uh, or other methods, infiltration into their household, stuff like that.